I've been doing some videos and I thought it would be just a, an opportune time during this Easter season to talk about the murals, the art that we have in the back of our church. I had an opportunity to sit down with Alexander Zorin. He is the artist and just to maybe pick his brain a little bit about his inspiration. Now you may remember that these murals weren't always here in our church. We acquired them from St. Dennis, St. Dennis closed. Also an interesting point to note is that the murals, they weren't in the sanctuary of St. Dennis, they were actually in the back or in the choir loft. So just a little perspective, you can still find a picture too on the internet if you want to find a picture of St. Dennis and see how they were configured in that church. Our artist Alexander, Alexander Zorn, he grew up in Russia, he is Russian was no faith that was suppressed by the government and so he talks about one day when they were in the square for a gathering it happened that one of the orthodox churches the, the doors had become opened and he saw a window into a world that he had never experienced before if you've ever seen the beauty of the icon of the orthodox church and the light coming out you can imagine what he experienced and he just wanted to sit in the gaze and experience and, and I think a lady in the church shoot him away but that so many things happen in our lives that God Christ touches our hearts he wanted to know more and he grew in faith and he wanted to contribute in some way he developed his own style you could say the own style that he developed and used when he was painting for St. Dennis that, that now gets carried away carried over here I should say into our church St. Isaac I think one of the pressing questions, one of the questions I always had is, who is depicted in the art? You'll notice that there's seven people in this mural, seven people in the mural on the opposite side, so it can't be the apostles. And what I gathered from Alexander is, he really wanted to capture the life of a disciple, but not necessarily in instant in time, maybe spreading out in, in some of the things that we experience in our own lives. There are times when we feel really close to Jesus. There are times that we feel not so close, we feel far away. So you'll see the, the disciples depicted in various poses, some of them with, with hands like this, praying. And then we've got this figure of the man that he seems knocked out, people attending to the man. Various scenes that Alexander wanted us to enter into the upper part. He wanted us to see our own lives, sometimes topsy, sometimes turvy, of our own struggles and be able to imagine ourselves in the own depiction in the life of Christ. There was a different crucifix. There was a different depiction of Christ. But again, Christ coming and from his sacrifice on the cross, this is the source of the Eucharist. This is the source of the Eucharistic sacrifice. I asked Alexander specifically about this angel because in my mind it looks uh, a little different when you're farther away that the halo is just very, very bright. I believe this may be the first figure that he drew in the collection and then had different inspiration. If you see the halo of the disciples, it's kind of broken and again he was saying that this is their pursuit of holiness. They don't have all of it worked out in this life. Receiving God's grace, they're they're becoming closer to Him, but it's it's a journey, it's 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 moving on a path. And again, the encouragement for us to enter into our own story. Now, the interesting thing is, and I I, I, I miss I didn't ask him about Christ because Christ also has the broken heel. Uh, I'm honestly not so sure about that one. On this side, we have more depictions of. The lives of the disciples, us trying to enter the picture. You see somebody completely turned upside down. You see the apostles with their hands over their heads. I know there's days that we felt it exactly like that. And the encouragement for us. Now on this side, we're receiving the blood of Christ, the Eucharistic again, the, the Eucharistic thing. Interestingly enough, a couple things that we can also pick out in the image. We'll see a, a pillar, and I asked Alexander, why the pillar? And he said, well, Christ calls us out of our own cultures. We can think in, in Corinthians and, and how St. Paul says, we are one 
body. And so he's calling us out of the culture. He called Alexander out of Russia to come and, and present his art in the United States. The ladder, there is a ladder on both sides representing us as climbing the spiritual ladder. And then on the other mural, it's not in this one, even a house that we, Jesus called the disciples, he calls us to leave our home and really, truly, and follow him wherever, wherever he takes us, wherever he leads. Now we move to our Blessed Mother Chapel. It may be that you don't even know that these representations are here. We have the representation of St. Paul. We have the representation of St. Peter, where St. Peter is holding the keys. A note with these, Alexander had told me that the project had run out of funding. So if you notice, these representations, representations of Peter and Paul, they aren't finished to the level that you'll see some of the other paintings in the level of detail. Of course, now we have Alexander's depiction of the crucifixion. We, the decision was made, although this would match the other artwork that Alexander created, we weren't going to replace our beautiful crucifix that is the tradition of St. Isaac with this one. So instead, we it rests here in our little Marian chapel. It is interesting, a couple things that Alexander noted to me. Let's see, I think this is supposed to be, tradition said that Calvary was in the place where Adam was buried. Adam, the first man. Jesus, the new Adam, that has had his descent into hell, would have went and, and got all the holy souls, including Adam first. Another point that Alexander had made to me is somehow his canvas had run out of room, so you'll see some of the painting actually extends onto the wood. Once again, we have a depiction here, and we, we stayed with our, our own crucifix as the focal point of the scenes. So at this point in the video, I figure we can just take a moment to pause and just go through and show some of the art, and just as Alexander had encouraged us, just for us to enter in and place ourselves, what is Jesus telling us through this particular representation? series, our little tour of the paintings at St. Isaac Jokes. I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please let us know. We've got many, many notes from our conversation, my conversation with Alexander, and we actually have contact with him, so perhaps if there's a question out there, we can get an answer. God bless you. Thank you very much.